In the deep places of Lordran sleep things people would rather leave forgotten. Beyond the resting bones, watchful necromancers, and the remains of the executed, we find the mysterious master of the catacombs. Pinwheel is a necromancer accredited with stealing the power of the Gravelord Nito. The power acquired, likely the art of resurrection, was to be used in an ill-fated plot that aimed to destroy the gods of Anor Londo. Pinwheel's chamber, itself a giant coffin, has skeletons strung up above the piles of books. The hands and feet of these skeletons have been removed, no doubt by the necromancer using the bloodied sores littering the room. Rendered harmless by the removal of these appendages, they become ideal subjects for Pinwheel's experiments and helpless vessels for the will of another. As you can see, I am captured, immobilized, soon to be a sacrifice to necromancy. Pinwheel's connection to the catacombs and the plot against the gods is contextualized by the presence of the Way of White in adjacent areas. The Undead Parish and Firelink Shrine are both holy places for the Way of White, and in the Tomb of the Giants beyond Pinwheel's lair is a petrified blacksmith that holds the large divine ember used in secret church rites. White Titanite is plentiful in this area and is used to upgrade divine weapons, however it finds an additional usage in upgrading weapons that are imbued with a cult. The Occult Ascension Path is a branch of the Divine Ascension Path, and both paths scale with faith. Divine Embers are the property of the Church. Meanwhile, the Dark Ember that allows for Occult Ascension was deemed forbidden by the Church and hidden away, for Occult weapons were used to hunt the gods themselves. Although the Church hid the Black Ember away, an Occult Club can be found in a secret mimic chest in Anor Londo. The loot from the chests nearby indicate that the club was placed there by a follower of Havel the Rock, who had a number of faithful priests among those who followed him. Thus it is revealed that the occult plotters have their roots in the clergy itself. In spite of the Way of White's connection to the catacombs, it has been compromised by necromancers. In response, the church sends any members who turn undead on missions to the site in order to reclaim the rite of kindling a secret rite which was passed down among clerics. Undead clerics are given a mission to seek kindling. Kindling is the art of feeding bonfires with humanity. Through kindling, we shall one day be granted magnificent powers. Pinwheel's possession of this rite betrays his disposition as a rogue cleric of the church, and the loss of the rite can be attributed to his treachery. A cult is tied to the faith of the individual. This begs the question of where the faith of the occultists lies. The answer might lie in Pinwheel's masks. His masks depict three figures, the valiant father, the kindly mother, and the naive child. In Japanese, Pinwheel's name is Sanin Baori, translating to three-person coat. In other words, he is three people acting as one. Together, they sum up the nuclear family unit. Nito himself is similarly cloaked in a multitude of skeletons, and within his tomb are found three sarcophagi, one for himself, a smaller one beside it, and a third, even smaller one, partly concealed in a wall. They correspond to the father, mother, and child. So it is that Pinwheel imitates the appearance of Nito, symbolically becoming one within this family motif. The motif of death as oneness, or family, repeats in Nito's archetypal successors, the Rotten and Aldrich, who are made up of conglomerated human remains. An epitaph that was cut from Dark Souls 3 reads, Do not be afraid. Death is not lonely. How thoughts combine will meld together. We will continue to live on as one. Death is equitable, accepting. We will all one day be welcomed by her embrace. The statues that line the halls of the catacombs bear the image of Pinwheel's masks. Those with the visage of the father pose no harm, but those bearing that of the mother will reveal deadly spikes from the mask of the child on her pregnant womb. This depiction of the purity of the unborn child reveals the attitude of the occultists, that they harbour contempt for life itself. Behind the seal of the Great Lord, deep within the Tomb of the Giants, are yet more pinwheels, guarding the entrance to Nito's tomb. 
Surrounding them is a crowd of prostrated skeletons, perhaps those that have offered their souls to death, just as Nito offers up the power of his own soul. A horde of skeleton children that inflicts toxic fights alongside the pinwheels, possibly children who have been sacrificed by these necromancers. In many places, it is a common practice for pinwheels to be placed on the graves of children. In spite of Nito's powers being stolen for the purposes of the occult plot, he continues to slumber soundly in his tomb until the player comes to relieve him of his lord's soul. Nito oversees all death, and his Gravelord's servants are known to usher in the eye of death to other worlds in order to proliferate Bane. So it seems he does not discriminate between the death spread by his followers and that spread by the ones who appropriated his powers. The dead do not take kindly to their rest being disturbed, and in this way, Nito is extremely interesting in his use of necromancy, being dead himself. Light agitates the sleeping dead, and such a transgression could be related to Pinwheel's lanterns and the skull lanterns used by his fellow necromancers. Countless dead rest here in peace, cradled by the comfort of dark. Light only agitates. We have no need for it here. 